physicist. I'm a physicist. I'm a physicist. And 15 minutes is very, very imprecise. <laughs> Who's time? How fast are we moving? The whole thing is very undefined. So I'll leave it to you. When you've had enough of me, start to say boo. I'm then I'll shut up. I'm Simple starting the stopwatch now. Now. Ready, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Give him a round of applause. Great. Now we start off um, light-hearted. I, I, was, I only was told to come in at uh, 9.20 yesterday morning and I got a fast train and came in. I had, uh, otherwise I was very, very busy and I have been extremely busy because the leadership contest took out uh, five or six weeks of my life. Uh, and I do run multiple businesses and other things. Um, so that's what I actually scribbled my notes on. Um, it's, a, it's a bit of continuous roll stationery from a standard dispenser. Um, now, actually, the most important things in history are often decided in this way, friends. For example, how many of you know what Operation Husky was? Anyone? Of course you do. You heard me at dinner yesterday. You know what Husky was as well. It was the invasion of, the Allied invasion of? Sicily, absolutely correct. And on the men's toilet mirror in Alexandria, Field Marshal Montgomery sketched out the plan. The wrong plan as it was, because he invaded in the wrong place. Um, Patton got it right. You don't go along single roads, if they're, even if they're short. You go by the quick, easy route. A lesson in politics as well. Um, hence the toilet paper. But um, let's sketch what I said. While I was traveling by train in London to get that fast train from Paddington, um, there were a lot of young ladies with signs waving them around saying, um, uh, save trees, cut carbon dioxide emissions. <laughs> trees eat carbon dioxide. I learned that when I was six or seven. But hey, they're being fed propaganda by our teachers. Now, D uh, David Curtin has covered that uh, admirably, and I wouldn't uh, attempt to go over that again. Uh, by the way, I came here to either do my Richard Brain impersonation, which doesn't work too well. I just speak slowly and sound as if I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> or I do this and I do my Boris Johnson one. So we can have a mix of both. However, that flag over there was being flown by Richard and I, Richard Brain and I, uh, two days ago outside the Supreme Court, where we felicitated the arrival and departure of uh, luminaries like Gina Miller and her, uh, Panic and various other good people. Time for you to go boo. Yeah, she's a sincere lady and she is sincerely wrong. And it is up to us to educate her. We understand these things better. She sees things in a very limited perspective. We see them in the huge panoply of our history and also what this might be, a, uh, this might foretell in the future. And we can't allow the path which she wants us to tread to be trod. Now, um, let's be serious now. What is actually going on in Parliament? What is Boris Johnson up to? There's a lot of confusion about this. Now, this bit gets serious. And if some of you want to take notes, I won't actually laugh. Because I'm actually going to do something I never normally do. I'm going to read from notes I've made before and have someone else actually write down for me, because this gets a bit complicated. What is he up to? I love Shakespeare. I was brought up on Shakespeare. Double, double toil and trouble was followed by, by the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. After that, Macbeth enters, something very politically incorrect now, how now you secret black and midnight hags, what ist you do? Now that would have been a good question to ask of Theresa May. He is, she is most definitely, in all material senses, a black and midnight hag. <laughs> but she was obviously that. Let's deal with the one who is not such an obvious black and midnight hag. We're referring to the innards, the bits that are important. And that is Boris Johnson. Now, I'm going to refer to notes. It is said that Boris Johnson has some secret plan to deliver Brexit. But only three people understand this. They're insiders. One of them is Dominic Cummings. One of them's me, I think. <laughs> and none of them is Boris Johnson because he's not going to deliver Brexit in the style that we want. What's this plan likely to be? Let's look at some background facts. 
A few weeks ago, in an article, it was declared that any bill which requires the exercise of the royal prerogative requires Queen's consent before it can progress to the third and final reading stage. If the Queen's consent is not signified, that's the posh word for given, the bill cannot be further debated by Parliament. There's recent precedent for that. In 1999, 16th of April, the Queen's consent for the military action against Iraq bill, 1999. Four years later, they went and invaded Iraq completely wrongly again, but at that time, they did get the, um, uh, the um, consent, the Queen's consent. This time, they didn't in 1999, and it did not progress further, which was a good thing. Um, Tony Blair actually is responsible for that good thing. He started to do worse things in uh, four years afterwards. So the power to conduct foreign policy, invading Iraq is foreign policy. Um, like the power to extend Article 50, is a prerogative power. It is exercised by the constitutional monarch, Her Majesty the Queen, on the advice of the Prime Minister, which the constitutional monarch always follows. Now let's look at what's happening now. The European Union withdrawal number six bill, also called the, Be the Ben Burt Act. Now officially, the European Union withdrawal number two act, as different from bill, because it has passed. It is an act of parliament which requires, requires the prime minister to ask the European Union for an Article 50 extension. And if the European Union gives it, which they may well do at the last minute, he must accept it. This is an act of parliament now. They still think they can squeeze us, but when they realize perhaps they can't, then they'll force us to extend Article 50. Further, beyond the 31st of October. Um, now, as such, this, be, this bill affected the um, royal prerogative and therefore it required Queen's consent. However, our delightful speaker, John Burko, ruled that he didn't require that. The speaker is trying to have his cake and eat it, as I will just show you right now. Article 50 is either a prerogative power or it isn't. We think it is because it's needed all the time, like for the Iraq invasion in 1999, which thankfully didn't happen because that bill didn't pass and so we didn't have anything to do with an invasion that therefore didn't happen at all. Now let's look at this. This power is either prerogative or it isn't. It's a binary choice. It's either one or it's the other. Let's look at the first possibility. If it is a prerogative power, then the Ben Burt bill did require Queen's consent to proceed towards the third stage, the third reading. Queen's consent which was not given. Now let's pretend if it was not a prerogative power, but if it was not a prerogative power, what source for the goose is source for the gander? It means we actually left the European Union already on the 29th of March, 2019, under the Robin Tilbrook case. They can't have it both ways. I hope those video cameras are working. They cannot. Something either is or is not. It, this is deterministic. There is no middle ground. If it's one, then this bill has falsely passed through Parliament and become an act. In fact, it hasn't passed. If I'm wrong, then we're out of the EU already, and none of this matters. Now, you may say, where's Boris Johnson in this? Well, why are you hearing this from me and not hearing it from Boris Johnson? That's an important question. Now, um, if, if the case, if indeed this was not a prerogative power, then Theresa May would have lacked the lawful and constitutional authority to extend Article 50 when she purported to do so. No primary legislation was passed, they were simply relying on secondary legislation to do this. The legal challenge by Robin Tilbrook was dismissed by our judiciary as being wholly without merit. That's another word for saying they couldn't find out any reason to actually dismiss it logically, so they just tried to rid ridicule it instead. It's a common technique used. Some maths teachers use it when they can't prove something, they just say, oh, it's ridiculous or it's obvious or something like that, and they don't prove it. Um, now, Boris Johnson and Jacob Rees-Mogg, I know they're aware of these arguments because I've written to them about it. I've had a friend of mine uh, write to them about it as well. These letters were delivered to them at their parliamentary address. They already know this argument and they've known this for a month. 
more than a month now. So they were fully aware. Yet Boris neither advised the Queen to withhold Queen's consent, nor did he make hay with this speaker's nonsense rulings that the Queen's consent was not needed. He did neither. Why? Always look to motive in something. Why is Boris Johnson, who is ostensibly a Brexiteer just like us, why isn't he doing things? Those of you who are fans of murder mysteries will know this. You can often learn as much by what people don't do as by what they do. Let's take the most charitable reading of this, that Boris chose not to advise the Queen to refuse Queen's consent because John Burko has already broken the rules and he'd later on um, come a cropper because of it and they'd get it overturned. Um, and this would um, undo everything. But this would have been a const what Burko did was a constitutional outrage. Why did Boris not make a great big fuss about it? Saying that we're going to replace Burko and we're going to put somebody else to stand against him and all that, that's not undoing what he's doing. That's making sure he doesn't continue to do the same thing. But what he's already done is totally unacceptable. He has broken every important parliamentary procedural rule in doing so. We've got a fake bill here, which we will, I suspect, find will mean that there is a prolongation beyond 31st October for more outrageous things to be hatched up. The Remainers to perhaps push for a general election in that time as well, which due to perceived Tory weakness may well be won by Remainers. A general election where we might have Swinson or even worse in number 10. Then you can forget Brexit. They'll, they, 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 they'll repeal Article 50 entirely. We won't get Brexit of any sort. Now, um, Boris Johnson has failed to attack and he's failed to defend. Um, I can't find any reason for doing this. Royal assent has never been refused since 1707. Um, he, he, he is being asked in the Supreme Court right now to justify himself that he did not mislead the Queen. This case can't lead anywhere because the question is not what he intended to do. The question is, was the Queen misled when she gave her, um, when she gave her consent? But friends, the only person who can testify to that is the Queen. And she can't get her to testify. She won't testify. She can't testify. The writ calling her to testify would be issued in her name. I, Her Majesty the Queen, require Her Majesty the Queen to come and to give evidence to her subjects. The last time this happened, Charles, it was Charles, the one who we now know as Charles I, who, who was involved, he came to a sticky end. I'm sure Her Majesty is much, much cleverer and she's not going to do any such thing. So this whole thing is a nonsense. Now, why is this going on? Um, let me, because I can see Kirsten wants me to not go on in full length. There is no doubt that Boris could have exercised his powers properly. In these constitutionally very turbulent times where Remainers brazenly disregard everything, including the referendum, the verdict of 17,410,741 people, plus me, making it 742, disregard all of that in the largest vote for a single outcome that has ever taken place in the United Kingdom, they're capable of anything. So why did Boris allow this breach to happen? Why would it ostensibly leave back Prime Minister like Boris shy away from exercising a power that he had and that he can legitimately wield to get this through. There are one or two ways in which Boris could have stopped this wretched Ben Burt Act. Yeah, this is the one which means he is obliged now by UK Act of Parliament to go to the EU to beg for an extension beyond October the 31st and if the EU offer it to accept it. They'll only offer it if they think they can force his hand on something else and they'll get through something in that interim time. He can't prorogue Parliament indefinitely. They sooner or later come in. In that case, they'll enact something valid, taking away our right to have a no-deal Brexit. Anyone who's ever run a business will know taking no deal off the table is lunacy. You can't do that. That's ridiculous. It's outrageous. It's stupid. It's lunatic, i.e. it's normal for the Lib Dems and for Labour. Instead of stopping this Ben Burt Act, that Price Pratt, that Bullingdonian jackass, has allowed it to pass. Why? Now, I hope I'm wrong about this bit. 
but I can see no plausible explanation other than he wanted the Ben Burt Act to pass. Now, why would a champion of Brexit want it to pass? That is a word duplicitous has come from the audience. Boris would have been free, otherwise, without this Ben Burt Act, to simply run the clock down to October the 31st um, and then leave. We'd have had a very strong contractual position because the European Union, who buy a lot more from us than we buy from them, other way around, thought you'd wake up. The only thing that we sell them in one way, it's almost one way, is stuff which involves the Noddle, the City of London, and they can't stop us even if they wanted to. Um, the stuff which they sell us, t tangibles, we can easily stop them. Um, if they give us a no-deal Brexit, we'll be free to buy things wherever they're cheaper, we libertarians, not be tied into some socialist project uh, and so on where things are far more expensive. So, why would Boris not want to do this? We'd have had a very strong negotiating position. We could have said, right, every minute you waste around that negotiating table, every minute is a minute closer to October the 31st when we will leave. So if you are cutting off your nose to spite your face, you will reap the whirlwind. But Boris has denied us this negotiating position by allowing this wretched act in, which will allow the EU, even at the last minute, to say to Boris, here's an extension, the clock stop, does not stop ticking on October the 31st. And further, Boris then has to accept the extension. Despite all the bluff, bluff and bluster, I assure you, Brussels knows they cannot possibly accept a no-deal Brexit. Angela Merkel, will, will, she will be guillotined by the French friends on behalf of the executive boards of BMW, Audi and Mercedes. Just looking at one sector of German industry, they will not allow this to happen. Nissan and Honda will be laughing. Three yes, Kirsten, I will rush now. With this on the statute books, Boris's hands are absolutely tied. He can't do anything. Why has he allowed himself? He might be into BDSM. Who knows what his other motives are? But why has he allowed his hands to be tied? He will be forced to tell Brexiteers, my hands have been tied by Parliament, I've done my best, I even risked jail, the Supreme Court could have technically thrown me in for defying this, that and the other, and I've done my best, but it's failed. Now the Conservative Party is currently squeezed from both sides. It's under pressure from the Remainers, led by the Lib Dems right now mainly, Greens, SNP, Plaid Cymru, Chuck uh, uh, and uh, Labour. They've all declared themselves unilaterally to be parties of Remain. In the case of Labour, they'd pretended before, but now it's absolutely unilaterally, universally clear. Even Corbyn has become clear, he wants Remain. Um, now, Boris also faces pressure from the Brexit Party. If he delivers a real and clean Brexit, the Conservative Party under Boris's leadership will get no votes at all for, from Remainers in this election who will have a chance to unite and unite with Labour and Lib Dem on the same side, perhaps not fielding candidates against each other. Tactically doing this, a pre-election pact. They'll win, friends. They'll win that general election. And we'll be faced with the horrific thought of having McDonnell who should be in prison, if I was uh, in charge, in number 11, of having the ancient mariner in number 10, and having Diane Abbott in charge of the Home Office. This is an outrage, and this is the danger. So how can Boris possibly risk this? This is where perhaps conspiracy theories come unstuck. However, he believes he will be able to handle this he will be able as well to get the cooperation of the Brexit Party in some form of alliance, because in some ways the Brexit Party doesn't want us to have a clean Brexit as well, because their entire raison d'etre then disappears. The clue is in the name. We're after independence. Independence and freedom are ongoing concepts. Brexit is clearly defined. Brexit becomes redundant as a goal once we've got Brexit. It's over then. Maybe there's other deals going on. Now, there is an article where um, Boris Johnson wrote to the widow of Leon Britton, where Boris Johnson said, I, his support for the European Union single market in a, is total. 
This is Boris Johnson writing this letter. That was in 2015, after Leon Britton died, in a letter to his widow. In 2016, when he was Foreign Secretary, Boris Johnson wrote that Britain's continued membership of the EU was a boon for the whole world and for Europe, including Britain. This is outrageous. According to David Cameron, Boris had told him, Cameron, I'm reluctant to quote Cameron, but just imagine he's right. Brexit will be crushed like a toad under the harrow. That's Boris speaking when Cameron was prime minister. Boris's whole family are Remainers. Sometimes things which quack like ducks, flap, look like ducks, flap their wings like ducks, are ducks. I believe, and I've never believed otherwise, that Boris Johnson is a Remainer. When he met Varadkar in um, Ireland recently, he said no deal would be a failure. Hey, he's supposed to be running businesses. No deal is, is our trump card in all of this. Um, both Boris Johnson and Rees Mogg, and in fact all but two members of the current cabinet, who did not back Remain outright, many of them backed Remain outright, but the so-called ones on our side, all but two of them backed to the Withdrawal Treaty Number 3 from Theresa May, which was a vassalage treaty, in the words of um, Jacob Rees-Mogg himself. A vassalage treaty. It made us slaves. We didn't even have any rights to say anything. It was worse than being on, continuing on in the European Union. So why on earth should we trust this cabinet? Only two of them voted otherwise. Rees-Mogg and Boris Johnson were two of them who voted for Theresa May's surrender treaty. It would be a treaty. We couldn't get out of it with an act of parliament. We could be sued. If we tried to get out of it afterwards and you drove to Europe in your car, you could have your car seized as part of the default punishment payment owed to the rest of Europe by the UK. One minute for It would be impossible. I hope I'm wrong about this, but the only explanation which fits Boris's observed behaviour is that he does not want to deliver a Brexit that would please UKIP. Um, if, if Boris does deliver, I'll take it all back. But if I'm right, somebody needs to be holding Boris to account now. UKIP must become electorally relevant now, not waste our time with internal politicking, with becoming like a cult or anything else. We have to be a relevant political party. The Brexit party doesn't have a logical reason to do it. And they too, why have they been silent? Try and find a re an equivalent to this speech, and I'm happy to give you a transcription of the whole lot. Try and find anyone else who's given it before I've given it to you today. And if you find it, well, I haven't found one. And they know about it. It's not that we're so brainy that we've thought about it and they haven't. That's just nonsense. But furthermore, we've told them what it is. Why have they allowed this to happen? That Ben Burt Act will be the undoing of Brexit. This has got to stop. We are now in the middle of September. We're nearing the end of September. It's just six weeks away. And they will cut the ground out from under us just before it's due. Conference, I call for your help in propagating this message. I will make sure all attendees are emailed a transcript of this. Send it to your MPs originally. There is something, again, I remind you where I started. By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. He's got curly hair and he looks as if he's a Brexiteer, but by hell, he's a Remainer. We don't trust him, we don't want him, and we've got to make sure we don't get tricked. We owe it to future generations. Thank you for listening to me so patiently. Thank you, Freddie.